So this is our second problem uh, under the principle of the conservation of energy. And this is also the second to the last problem. Now the problem states that you have a one point, a z I mean 0 0.150 kilogram block of ice, which is placed against a compressed spring mounted on a horizontal tabletop that is 1.20 meters above the floor. The spring has a force constant of 1,900 newton per meter and is initially compressed to 0 0.045 meters. The mass of the spring is negligible. The spring is released and the block slides along the table, goes off the edge and travels to the floor. If there is negligible friction, so this is one of the things that you should note, negligible friction between the block of ice and the tabletop, what is the speed of the block of ice when it reaches the floor? So I am hoping that you were able to somehow visualize in your mind the problem. Otherwise, you will find the problem very difficult to solve. So firstly, uh, one of the things that I you have to note in the problem is that um, this mass over here is connected to a spring and that spring has a given force constant of 1,900 newton per meter because that implies that there is some form of energy associated with this spring because of this mass over here nga connected on a spring. The second thing that you need to note that you should have imagined is the fact that it is stated that the tabletop by which your spring is resting is 1.20 meters above the floor. So that means to say that, that it, it is at an elevation of, let's say this one is 1.20 meters if this is your floor over here. So marasyag na sa table, nga ang katas niya is 1.20 meters gikan sa imo ang ground. Now obviously, as you can imagine, when the spring is released at point A, uh, di ba, it compress, it's also compressed, uh, to this displacement, negative 0 0.045, negative implies that it's moving or that displacement is moving towards the left. Now, of course, at that point of compression, the velocity is still zero. But as you can imagine, when you try to release that one, it will travel towards your right and eventually reaching this point before dropping to the floor. So this is telling you that at, at point B, you will have a velocity over here. And after uh, it reaches point B, since basically that is like at uh, the end of the table, it will move down towards the ground. So that means to say that the new position of your mass will be here. And this is actually what is being asked in the problem. If at that point, uh, I noted that that is my point C, what is, okay, I just have to change the, okay, at point C, what is its velocity? Now, I will try to solve this problem first. Saka itong medyo taas niya nga pag solve class and later, kung nakasabot yun kay mo, you will realize that this can be solved in an easier, mas easier pag yun na fashion. Okay? Now, uh, as you already knew from now, na whenever we try to solve, um, conservation of energies, it is essential to denote specific points, no? Point, in this case, point A, point B, and on the ground is point C. Now, why we denoted this point? It's because we have to uh, make it explicit in our equation. Basically, we will make equations out of it because the energy at point A is the same as the energy at point B, and that is also the same as the energy at point C, when I say loosely say energy, I am talking about the um, sum of kinetic and potential energies, all right? So the first thing that I am going to solve in this problem, or before that, by the way, I just have to write the given in the problem. So the given are, of course, the mass of your block, which is 0 0.150 kilograms. should have written it as a capital or Type one mass of 0 0.150, and then um, the force constant of a spring is also given to be 1,900 newtons per meter. All right, now okay, so let go, let's go back to the problem. Basically, uh, we knew from the principle of conservation that whatever the energy at point A, which is the point where your spring, your mass is connected to the spring, and the spring is compress equal lang na siya dapat sa energy at point B. 
just before it falls to the ground and equal the pressure sa energy at point C. All right. So the next thing that you have to um, do here is to just use only two. In this case, I will consider from point A to point B. So from point A to point B na conservation to point B. So when I have that, um, I just have to remember that um, the energy at point A is just equal to the energy at point B. But then again, the energy that I'm talking is mechanical, so I have to take the sum of uh, your potential and kinetic. So I have the potential at A. But I have to be very specific. What potential am I talking? So if you notice that you have spring, so you have potential elastic at A, and then your potential gravitational at point A, and then your kinetic energy at point A. So these are all the forces, or I mean the energies at point A. Now the next thing is you have to equate that at energies at B. So it could be potential, you don't have any spring at point B, so only gravitational potential at A, ah, sorry, at B. And then the kinetic energy at point B also. Now, if you look into this equation, this one over here is quite, um, I don't really like to look at it because there's a lot of um, potentials that I'm getting. So the solution to this one is, but remember, in the potential energy, gravitational potential energy, you actually have the freedom of where to set your H is equal to zero. Now, I'm being wise here by setting my gravitational potential energy I mean, my H is equal to zero for my gravitational potential energy to be on the table itself. So that is where I set my measurement of H is equal to zero. Now, why I did this for me to have these two parts of the equation to be just a zero. So wala na ni. The gravitational potential energy at point A, since this is where I set my H is equal to zero, that is also zero. In the same manner, the gravitational potential energy at point B, this one over here, will also become zero since that is where I set my measurement of height is equal to zero. So be strategic in where you set your H is equal to zero. So from this one, I'm going to um, break this down. So elastic potential energy, if you recall, is just one half K X squared. And then your... Um, kinetic energy is just one half m the velocity at b squared. Now uh, it's very clear that uh, one half is a common factor on both sides, so I'm going to multiply that one by two, and in doing that, I have um, this equation: k x squared is equal to m v b squared. So I am looking for velocity at point b. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, actually just divide by M. Okay. Let's divide both sides by M. This one also by M. So when you do that, you will have just this expression. Kx squared all over M is equal to velocity at B squared. Now to take out the square, or to to get rid of the square in VB, um, I will just take the positive root, so that will give me the velocity at B is just equal to the square root of K X squared over M. All right, so from there, uh, you just have to substitute the values. So let me continue here. This will give me the velocity at B is equal to the square root of K X squared all over M. And we just have to substitute the values. K is 1,900 newtons per meter. X squared is negative 0 0.045 meters squared. Let me just check that out. Yep, it's correct. Over the mass of 0 0.150. 150 kilograms. So I will not I will no longer show the cancellation of the units because I already did that and I am sure that the units that will be left is meter per second so maybe you should check that out for yourself um and then uh, when you try to substitute this in your calculator you will get 
if we round off the two decimal places, 5.06 meters per second. So that is the velocity at point B. So the VB here, based from what we have solved, I'm just going to put something here, is 5.06 meters per second. Now, if we focus on, on this section, I am hoping you are able to think, na, ah, I can really use kinematics here. So you can actually use the kinematics equation class. The VB will become your initial velocity, and the VC will be the final velocity that you will solve for. And of course, you have this height. This is the same as 1.20 meters. So you can actually do kinematics equation over here. And you will get the same answer as mine. But I will not do kinematics equation. I will do conservation of energy. So the second thing that I have to do here is about the very fund fundamental principle that we talk is the energy at point A, meaning all the energy at this point is equal to the energy at this point as well as to the energy of this point. Now, um, since I am looking for the velocity at point C, this one, I will now consider two points, point B and point C. So I will write here, um, from point B to point C, to point C. Actually, this is the long way, nice short nga way, ane, but you can um, arrive at that solution only when a subtan yun nimo ang principle. So uh, I'm gonna share that later. So this time around, this is just saying that all of the energy or the sum of the energy at B should be equal to the energy of C because they are basically conserved. So the energy at B, um, okay, I'm just going to write this down. The gravitational potential energy at B plus the kinetic energy at B. That must be equal to the gravitational potential energy at C and the kinetic energy at C. All right, as we are aware earlier, but this is where we set our H is equal to zero. So the consequence of that in our equation here is that this is zero. However, UGC is no longer zero, right? Because at that has, that's the GC that we're talking here is the boundary and a portion. And we know that that has um, so a value of negative 120 meters in height. So that will not be zero. So working with this equation, I'm going to break this down. We have one half. M, the velocity at B squared is equal to, um, we have M, G, H, plus one half mass, the velocity at C squared. Now, if you notice that, on my right hand side, my mass is a common term, so I'm going to factor that out. So this will be gh plus one half vc squared. Why I did factor that out? Because I am planning to eliminate mass or to um, cancel out mass by dividing both sides of the equation by m. So when I do that, m would cancel out on my left hand side, and so is m cancelled out also on my right hand side. So I now have VB squared, um, this is over 2, is equal to GH plus 1 half VC squared. All right, so I think this is very clear to you what we are going to do with this one since we are only looking for uh, VC, right? So what you are going to do, or what you are going to do is to simply transpose this term to isolate VC. So you should get VB squared all over 2 minus GH is equal to 1 half VC squared. All right. So the next thing is we have to isolate VC. Napashay coefficient na 1 half. So I will multiply both sides by 2. And upon doing that, um, this is understood na napun is 2 there, you know? So upon doing that, 2 will be distributed. So na na siya 2 distributed over here. So na na kay VB squared. And then 2 is also distributed to the next term. So minus 2 GH is equal to, and of course, the 2 in this portion of the equation will cancel out to so VC squared. So that's quite easy to, to work with now. So we just take the positive root. And so we get this one. The, that is just the square root of VB squared minus 2GH 
is equal to VC. And this actually looks like the, the kinematics equation that you knew. So right now, I'm just going to change the positions. I just want to have VC on my left-hand side. Okay, and substitute the values. So when you substitute the values, you will get the velocity at B is 5.06 meters per second, and everything is squared minus 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared. And then you multiply it by the height. So let's go back to the sketch. Um, as you can see here, this is where I set, as I've said, my h is equal to 0. So since I am moving down, all measurements of height will bear a negative value. Since ubus man siya sa 0. So remember your xy plane. So that means to say that the height will not be written as 1.20 meters, but negative 1.20. So that is negative 1.20 meters. I will no longer show the um, signs. It's, it's pretty apparent that the, si I mean the unit inside is meters squared per second squared, which is what we should expect for velocity. So when you calculate that one, uh, you should get uh, two, two decimal places, 0 0.71, I mean 0 0.01 meter per second. So that is the velocity at point C. But then again, you can use kinematics on this part. Okay, it's like 17 minutes, so what's the shortcut of this one? Now, take note, balik tadari, that the energy at point A, B, and C are all equal based on the conservation of energy. Now, I am concerned, I want you to pay special attention. I, want, I am concerned on getting the velocity at point C because that is what the problem is asking for. Now, the shortcut way of doing this one is since I know that energy at A is equal to energy at B is equal to energy at C, I could directly equate the energy at A and the energy at C to get VC. So I actually bypassed this part over here, this one. So, But you will only be able to think of this solution if you have understood fully the concept. So that means to say you can just have the shortcut. You just have that the energy at A is equal to the energy at C. And you can solve directly for VC. And that will still be 7.01 meter per second. Okay, so I'm hoping you understood this problem well, as well as the alternative way of solving the problem.